All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 340, Bantu Folklore, Medical and General. This is a very interesting ethnographic work. This is more on the specifically anthropological side, as opposed to being specifically about relating superstitious tales, but it has a really large amount of stuff in it, although some of it's linguistic, and so, because I can't pronounce you know, any Bantu language, uh, probably would butcher it if I tried to relate it, but there are a few terms that I'll have to use anyway, so we'll, we'll see what we can do. Link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon, uh, Amazon, first and foremost. Second and third links are to my books blogs. This is 77 pages long, so it's on the shorter side. It is a scientific work, generally speaking. It's an ethnographic study. And what it seeks to do is to talk about the different types of doctors, the different categories, um, both what we would consider on the more spiritual end, like like superstitious herb doctors um, and, and so forth. There are, there are apparently whistling doctors that think that they can hear whistling sounds coming through like cracks in trees and stuff, and they attempt to interpret this for medical purposes. Um, it is generally medical in form, but there's a lot of superstition here that goes beyond that. For instance, there's an entire section just on the sort of ritualism and, and sort of spiritual and superstitious beliefs of the people there with regards to lightning strikes. Like if someone is struck by lightning, and, and this is probably still the case in certain Outlands areas, because a lot of these more tribal groups, they don't really like contact with the more urban centers and, and are still out there in the hinterlands. Apparently a body struck by lightning is considered extremely unlucky. Uh, and so it's not a good idea to get anywhere near it, according to their various customs. And then you have a huge laundry list, like half an entire Materia Medica of different herbs. Now, it gives the uh, native pronunciation as well as the scientific name, generally, uh, of these various cures. And some of them are compounded. It's more than one, one actual ingredient. But a lot of them are herbals, They're basically herbal simples. In this time period, I can't, I can't imagine why the author actually applauds this, and, and he does. This is less, uh, less uh, ethnocentric than most American and European works on these sorts of subjects from this time period. If you look at the Materia Medica involved, some of the species overlap with the Thomsonian practice that was still kind of in vogue even to that day. <laughs> so uh, this particular work is less ethnocentrically preachy than certain works within anthropology and ethnography of the time. A lot of times what you get is studies in Japan or India kind of applaud the cultures, but anything from Africa, uh, native tribes in the United States, sometimes uh, they still had the noble savage mythology stuff, even like Eastern Europe, Russia, uh, certainly Aboriginal I use that in quotes, people in Australia, a lot of them are like, well, these primitives think that chewing this root up will cure the headache, but it's basically bullshit. Here, though, there's actually a couple of asides where it is noted that there is a chemical action of some of the species involved, and about half of the work is specifically herbal. Um, they don't get much into the cow dung doctors uh, or, or certain other varieties of what amount to which doctors, because they're less interesting. <laughs> of course, uh, the herbal side is much more categorical. Uh, you have surgical uh, practices as well. Of course, venesection is used, literally taking physic, which was still being used by Europeans at the time. Uh, so there is overlap, actually, to tell the truth. Uh, it's interesting to look at the, uh, the one part that does definitely sort of uh, shit on the, the tribes that are being studied is the last section with regards to uh, things involving like marriage, childbirth, puberty, and stuff, some of those rituals, because uh, it talks about, like, like orgies and things. Basically, in, in certain tribal groups within sub-Saharan Africa, the concept of sexual contact, especially among younger people, you know, the, the warriors and shit, is not frowned upon unless it, rev it involves full copulation and reproduction. And in some cases, even that is basically poo-pooed away. And it's said here, <clears throat> basically... You know, if you're at one of these orgies and you copulate with the girl and she gets pregnant, uh, you have to pay the family a fine or you have to marry her. <laughs> so basically it's like, oh, well, hmm, uh, uh, how attractive are you? Okay, we'll get married or something like that. Oh, here's, here's five goats. Um, this still happens in many parts of the world. This is not limited to the Bantu tribes of South Africa, just to be clear. This sort of thing is common still in Central and South Asia. Uh, it's common in parts of Latin America. Um, because there are parts of the world that are considerably less contacted by urban influence. There, the spiritual systems, you can call them 
bad or unhelpful or, or superstitious pablum, if you want. Uh, but they are more authentic. They haven't changed as much. Uh, of course, that's uh, rapidly being altered by the cell phone revolution at this point. Smartphones are starting to destroy tribal cultures all over the world, which is, I think, uh, slightly amusing and will be anthropologically studied in 20 or 30 years quite a bit. But it's overall, it's a very good work. Highly recommended. If you like anything about folklore, you'll love it. Anthropology, if you're more into the scientific historical side of supernatural stuff, superstition, if you're into any variant of African history, or even into just herbals. This has a whole laundry list of different herbal species. I think there's like 200 different entries that it covers for all sorts of different diseases and an entire categorical system for diseases, which in some cases is odd. For instance, uh, psoriasis is treated as a, a subvariant of leprosy. Of course, they're not remotely the same thing, but the treatment remains the same because, of course, it is symptomatic in nature. Now, again, a link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs. Again, highly recommended. It's, it's one of the better works that I've edited recently. That's about all. Peace out.